Okay, cool. Cool, excellent. <coughs> I like uh, some horror movie. Horror movies, all right. There you go. I can't do horror movies. They scare me too much. Not for me. <laughs> I like uh, vampires. Ah, well, you must like the, the New Age stuff because there are a lot of vampire movies now. Lots of vampire movies. <laughs> cool. And hey, Servet, are we okay now? Yes. All downloaded? All right, yeah, excellent. Downloaded. How's your day today? Yeah, it's well. It's, I was working on the Turkish classes. I was preparing documents. Cool, cool, yeah. excellent. And I take a break for your class. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> uh, Sonia, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, thanks. And you? I'm good. I'm good, yeah. I just woke up and uh, I started doing my last little investigation about Egypt. Egypt, yeah. <laughs> the last little bits of history, but there's there's so much that I wanted to uh, to look at some of modern the modern history of Egypt, right? Because I think a lot of the times when we think of Egypt, we really get caught in the past because they have so much ancient history. But uh, I yeah, do exactly, yeah. Modern Egypt as well, right? A lot of people forget about modern Egypt because <laughs> it's so interesting in the past. So. Cool. And hello, Svetlana. Hello, Daniel. Hey. Hello. <laughs> How's it going today? I'm very well, thank you. And today um, the weather is nice, the uh, sun is shining, and everything is great. Good. Are you ready for the weekend? Uh, you know, we um, had a kind of weekend yesterday because uh, my brother went us uh, to spend time and we had lovely dinner with salmon, uh, with lime and uh, 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 cake and uh, it was, uh, we had fun. <laughs> Beautiful, sounds great. Sounds great. Excellent. <laughs> Very cool. And uh, Victor, how are you doing? Oh, hello. I'm hey. doing okay. Hi. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Good to see you again. Uh, hey, I see Ferdinand says, do you know about Philippine history? Well, I know the basics about Philippine history, but there's a lot to know about the Philippines as well, with the Spain and the United States and, and lots of stuff, right? So. Uh, we'll put we'll have the Philippines on the list of countries we're gonna do, um, but we've got a big list. We've got a lot of countries in this world, unfortunately. So we have to we have to do a lot of a lot of different ones. So, so we'll put it on there. Make sure that make sure the Philippines is looked at. Hey, Louisa, how how are you doing today? Hi, Yeah, feeling feeling optimistic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. And, and, yeah. Yeah. No studying for the weekend. Yeah. No studying. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Cool. Do you Do you have any plans? I have plans, but I don't know where we can or oh, no. I want to go to camping in Sunday. Going what? Camping. Isn't it? Is it warm enough to go camping? Uh, no. Maybe there will be snow. But maybe snow. Wow! You're a brave woman. You're a brave <laughs> woman. <laughs> and I'd be camping like this, you know. Like, Come on, make make the campfire. Already, <laughs> already okay for us because it is snowing even in Sydney. Oh wow! You know. Louisa, I have a, a friend in Canada, and, and she um, she likes to go camping in the middle of winter in Canada. She does winter mm -hmm. camping, and she digs a hole in the snow and puts her sleeping bag in there and sleeps in kind of like an igloo in the oh, in the. No. <laughs> sounds crazy to me, but she does it every year. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not that kind of crazy. <laughs> no. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I, I don't understand. Do you know uh, when they sleep like this? What yeah. if uh, in the uh, at night it it's it snows, it gets snow, and if the hole uh, uh -huh. becomes closed, how will breathe? Uh, that's a good question, Seb. I don't know how easy it is to sleep when it's that cold. <laughs> I think I'd be just like, oh, I can't sleep. It's so difficult. I, I've slept when it's below zero before in the tent, and it's awful. But she goes when it's like minus 20. Oh, crazy. Yeah, that's a good question, though. That's a good question. I have I have a fear, too, of being trapped in the snow. Mm. Yeah. Yes. It's like a... <laughs> It's like a being buried, buried, buried alive. Yeah. Yes. You know, um, my cousin was telling me about getting caught. He was—he's a skier, and he got caught in an avalanche. Mm -hmm. it sounds really scary, because you can't move your body when you get when you get stuck in the snow. You can't move. Your arms don't move. So you just have to wait for somebody to come. To come uh, get him out. He went. Uh, his he was skiing with a friend, so so somebody came and uh, they saw his hand. They could just see his hand from out of the snow, and he was waving it like this. And they came by and touched him, and then had shovels and things and dug him out. Oh. Scary, definitely scary. It's an adventure. Then, what's that? An adventure. An adventure, yeah. Well, you know, in in Canada, it's often um, it's often common for people to go backcountry skiing. They call it. So they ski away from the the ski hills, and um, and they bring like devices with them so that people can find them if they're trapped in an avalanche. And they all have shovels to dig each other out. But uh, sounds scary to me. <laughs> Patricia, I, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> uh, Huan, how are you doing anyway? Oh, I'm doing fine, thank you. Yeah, um, I haven't, I'm good. I'm good. I haven't seen you for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> it's really hard to get a spot in your class. I know, I know, and I like and uh, and they're they're looking to change the format of the classes so that maybe we can get more people in the class um, at one really? time. Really, but they're it is Google based, so how can you? Well, manage well it? they've been talking. Maybe they can figure something else out. Okay. We'll see. They they've got some ideas. They've got some experts with with some plans. <laughs> I should I teach you how to be a bad teacher. If you be a t strict teacher, it will be easier to join your classes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need a ruler so I can hit you guys on the screen with it, right? <laughs> bad service. <yeah. laughs> uh, Liliana, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing well. I woke up earlier. And I just arrived from my walk with little Max. Ah, excellent, excellent. No, uh, no rain today. No, the sun is shining. We oh, fantastic! Rain, uh, the last days, we are so luck, so lucky <laughs> with this uh, weather. No, all the days uh, are sunny, and we have a uh, warm weather, so it's good to go outside. Ah, okay, great. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yes, after I, class, I, I, you know, I sorry, Liliana? No, no, after class I, I go. I have to, to go. Because I, I have to do some errands after you have a, You have a busy day today? Uh, more or less, more or less. Well, that's <laughs> but good. I, but I try to, to be in your classes too. All right, sounds good. Well, well, we, we do have, um, it's too bad because we do have a study advisory next, right? But uh, I'm sure you know that. Ah, uh, uh, no, no, I, I don't remember. But okay. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, anyway, hey, listen, guys. We, uh, we're on our last day of Egypt, and we haven't looked a lot at the history, right? We talked a little bit about sphinxes, and we talked about pyramids, but we haven't looked at any of the modern history. So, very quickly, what I want to do is do a very, a very big recap 
okay, a, a review of everything we've already talked about. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put things up and I'm just going to ask some questions. I want you to tell me what you know about things, okay? And um, and if if this is your first class, no problem. You'll learn something, and uh, we'll get everybody doing some reading today too, and and discussing Egypt. So to start with, I'm going to pull up the map, the map of the Egypt area, okay. For anybody who hasn't been to class or has never looked at a map of Egypt, okay. is that coming in clear? Yes. yes. Okay. No. So, can somebody tell me by looking at this map about the geography of Egypt? What do we know about Egypt? We know the Sinai Peninsula. In the north, it's the, yeah. the Sinai yeah. Peninsula here, yeah. Yeah, we know the Nile, Nile, and the population is all the population is near Nile. Yes, this and, is true as well, yeah. And Nile is the longest river in the world, I think. Yes, yes. And what else? Uh, other parts of Egypt is desert or desert. Yeah, almost all of Egypt is desert, yeah. Good. Desert. What else? And it has some neighbors. Sure. Well, it has some what? So, uh, neighbors? Sorry. Neighbors. Uh, neighbors. Israel, yeah, Israel, Pakistan, Libya, Saudi Arabia. No, not Pakistan. No. Yeah, oh, not Pakistan. Yeah. Okay, not Pakistan. Palestine. Palestine. Oh, Palestine. Right? Because okay. right in here we have the Gaza Strip. The Gaza Strip. Mm. Okay. So I'm going to show you, we're going to talk a little bit more about the, the history because there's actually quite a bit of history with Egypt and Israel and, mm. and the Gaza Strip. Um, mm. We're not going to get into, I, I don't want to get into any debates because I know when people talk about Israel, things can get pretty heated. <laughs> right? mm. The Middle East. So we're just going to discuss what has happened and talk about the facts more than anything. Okay. And there is a canal, what was its name? Can, uh... Yeah, what do we call the canal? Does anybody remember? Suez Canal. Suez. The Suez Canal. The Suez yeah. Canal. Yeah, good. Uh, according to the uh, contracts, treaty, treaties, yeah. the treaty, it will be always open uh, in every case, war or not for commercial ships. Exactly. Always open, even during times of war, right? Yeah. yeah um, An important thing, yeah. Cool. I think it took uh, approximately 10 years to finish it. Yeah. Because uh, there, there had already been some canals in, in that route, on that route. Yeah. So they didn't need to dig whole the country. Uh, they did some uh, connection routes, connection ditches, and they did. It. And they they always uh, enlarge the canal because of the needs, because of cruises. They are well, very big. You know, you know what, Servet, you have an amazing memory. Yeah. You. <laughs> You, you have remembered everything we've talked about. <laughs> Not just a little bit, you've remembered everything. It's fantastic. Good memory, Servet. <laughs> yeah. A Very good great. student. Yeah, definitely. Good teacher. definitely. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> if, if we had a test on Egypt, I think you might, uh, you might get 100% on it. <laughs> Because I have a perfect teacher, it's not my memory. Mm. <laughs> Thanks to Daniel. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Cool. Well, hey guys, uh, let's continue on here. Um, so, Servet's cover. Oh, that's the history. Sorry, I don't want to look at that yet. Uh, Daniel, uh, read. Uh, please read what Victor uh, typed in the chat. What's the difference between canal and channel? Canal. Ah, that's okay. A, a can a canal, Victor, is actually man-made.
Okay, when it's a canal, it's man-made. Okay, but a channel is kind of like um, an area between between a sea. Okay, but it's not man-made. So when we talked uh, about Turkey, we had a channel, right? Channel. Um, let's see. We can we can see on the map actually. Let me just go back to the map, and I'll show you. Okay. Can you see that? Right here, where Istanbul is, we actually have a channel that goes through there because it's not man-made, this area that passes through Istanbul. Okay? So that would be a channel because it's not man-made. If we look over at Spain here, Spain and Morocco right on the end, can you see this, Victor? Oh, yes. Okay. This, is, this is a channel of sorts, too. They call it the straight of Gibraltar, but it's a, it's a channel as well, a straight or a channel or similar ideas. And same thing, because it's not man-made, but it's a tiny little opening for for access, that's a, that's a channel. Okay, Does that make sense? In, in uh, Amsterdam, okay. they build channels? No, in Amsterdam, they be, build canals. Right? They build canals because they're man-made in Amsterdam. Remember, a canal is man-made. A channel is is made by nature. Okay. Okay. And and another thing, when we pronounce them, right? Canal, the the act, the stress is on the last a, and in channel, it's on the first syllable, on the first a. Okay. Canal, channel. So they sound quite a bit different too. But it is funny, Victor, that they're almost the same word and they have a similar meaning, right? But they are a little bit different. Different. Okay, meaning. thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, okay. So here we go. Let's take a look at what we've already talked about and, uh, and I think Servet's given us a lot already. <laughs> But, but we'll continue here. So first of all, we've talked about this already three times, but let's do it one more time. Can anybody tell me about the three colors of the flag? Uh, red means uh, blood and revolution and wars that they had. Sure, the, yeah, the blood and revolution, yeah. Uh, the white, the peace. Uh, the peace, the, yeah. And the black is uh, that they, it's the color of the independence, because now they yeah. are a free country. Egypt is a free country. Exactly. It's 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 the symbol of independence and um, rejecting the oppression of foreign rulers like the British, like the French, like the Ottoman Empire. Right. So rejecting a foreign ruler. Okay. And the eagle in the middle. It's uh, the eagle of Saladin. It's because uh, it has this name because of the first sultan. Good, yeah, the first sultan or the first king of Egypt, exactly. Perfect, perfect. All right, um, moving down, we talked about geography, and we, we said one of the interesting things that, that has already been pointed out by Servet is that everybody lives along the Nile, okay, because... You have desert everywhere else. So all of the people in Egypt live close to the Nile. You have a little bit of population along the Red Sea, and you have a little bit of population up here in the north along the Mediterranean Sea. But almost all of the people live along the Nile, including the capital city, which is? Cairo. Cairo. What is the second biggest city in Egypt? Alexandria. Alexandria. Alexandria, right. Somewhere in this area, right? Cairo's down here. Does anybody know what the third biggest city is? It's at the end of the Suez Canal, right? This is the Suez Canal here. And on this end, we have the third biggest city. No. No. It's called Port Said. Port Said. Okay, third biggest city right there. So if you see the map, here's a map here. And this shows population density, okay? shows the population of Egypt. You can see here is Cairo, right? Here is Alexandria. 
here is Port Said. But you can see nobody lives anywhere else. Nobody lives in Egypt. Mm -hmm. They all live along the Nile. Okay? Because the Nile is, it's the, they say, the artery, the artery of the country, right? It's what brings life to the country. Good. Now we also talked about how long the Nile is. Does anybody know how long, how far it goes? Until Lake Victoria? Or until Lake Victoria, yeah. Until Lake Victoria, definitely. Right? It passes through all of Egypt, all of the Sudan. I think this is uh, Uganda right here, right? I believe. I believe. And then we have... I'm I'm try I'm not very good with my uh, my geography of of Africa actually, but I think this is Kenya. Is this Kenya here, and then this is Tanzania, or the other way around, something like that. Okay. But you can see it also. There's also um, water coming in from from uh, Egypt, or sorry, from uh, Ethiopia as well. <clears throat> so you you do have different sources of the Nile River. Okay. All right, and we talked about the Sinai Peninsula. Can anybody tell me um, what what's happening in the Sinai Peninsula? Why is it so famous? Because of the trade between uh, and you can it's join uh, Africa. Uh, with Asia. Exactly. <clears throat> yeah. It joins Africa and Asia, right? It's a joining uh, part of, of, of the trade, and this is an, uh, it's an important uh, location because there is a trade between two. two right, right. It, it's an important trade route, right? A trade route, right? So if you control the Sinai Peninsula, you control things that are coming back and forth. So historically. It's it's um it's been an important area and has been occupied by many different groups. Okay. And uh, I would like to add that this place is a quite important place for Christians and Muslims who believe that um, they are uh, the God, uh, God uh, said uh, his rules to people. How um, they uh, should behave themselves. Right, and, the, uh, the Ten Commandments, they say, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, it's it's the Mount Sinai is in the middle here. I'm not sure exactly where Mount Sinai is. Somewhere in here, I think. Um, and and yes, that this is where the Ten Commandments were were said to have been given to Moses. So so. Um, Jews, Muslims, and and Christians all all believe this the same the same story, right? That that this is where uh, all these three religions kind of start the rules that they're that they've been given. Okay. Also, in recent times, right? Um, it's become the Sinai Peninsula has become also a, a very touristy spot, and I think Radic was telling us last time that he went there on vacation. Because there's lots of diving in the Red Sea, okay? Lots of diving and beautiful beaches there, okay? So, speaking of the Red Sea, it has a lot of different marine life, okay? Very beautiful. It's the most northern tropical sea in the world, okay? Uh, sorry, we're going quick here, guys. We're going quick. Because we really do have to get to some new stuff. So the Suez Canal, uh, Servet already told us about it. He, he explained everything perfectly. I don't know if we have to talk much more. And we will look at it uh, again in a little bit here. Okay. Uh, okay, then we talked about the Pyramids of Giza. Does anybody, can anybody tell me anything about the Pyramids of Giza? Is the tomb of like a person, Saad, 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 Saad. What was it? Which one? Can you say that again, sir? Sorry. Uh, it's a, normally the pyramids are being made for for kings for for kings ah. and uh, yes, uh, it's their tomb. And every 
Yeah, their tomb. And every premise, you know, uh, if it's a premise made for me, for example, <laughs> uh, uh, the place that I sleep in, like after I die, after I die, yeah, it gets uh, sun rays when I born and when I uh, become a king. Two times a year, that day it takes sun. It gets sun inside it. Sun comes ah. inside the, that room. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. So the sun, sun can enter the pyramid. Yes, when the king uh, becomes king and when he borns, oh, on that date, just oh, wow. on that date. Yeah. Wow. That's that's why they have this shape. They point to the sun. Oh, yeah. Um, and I think uh, the Great Pyramids of Egypt is uh, the most ancient and famous sites in Egypt and also in the world. And it's one of the oldest uh, seven wonders of the world. Right, yeah. It's the oldest of the seven wonders and the only one that is still completely intact of the ancient seven wonders of the world, right? We pointed out now they've made modern. Uh, Wonders of the world, like the Great Wall of China and uh, and some others, right? I think Machu Picchu's on there. Uh -huh. But but, uh, but now um, I would say that they are not so exciting because we are used to uh, seeing skyscrapers, and uh, so uh, we are not uh, amazed by them too much. Good. Good point, Svetlana. I'm sure that when people first saw these, before there were any other large buildings in the world, these would have been incredible, right? Unbelievable. Yes. Because nothing was as tall as these. Yeah, really good point. Yeah. I see some, uh, some things on the internet about pyramids. I don't know if it's correct. They say, for example, if you put dirty water in pyramid in a few days, it becomes... Uh, it sanitizes. It says it sanitizes <laughs> the water. I don't uh, know. That's, put... That sounds like a little bit of a myth to me. But say <laughs> what? I don't, I don't understand. Could you repeat it, please? Sanitizes. Yeah, it becomes uh, like it clean water. Uh, uh, really? And they say if you put rubbish inside pyramid, it doesn't uh, leaves. It doesn't leave like bad smell. It becomes like mummy, you know? Uh, uh -huh. How yes. do you call Mummies. M Mummified. Yeah, mummifies. Mm. Huh. I don't know. So that sounds a little bit uh, strange to me. I don't know if I believe that. Yeah, no. <laughs> On internet, <laughs> there are lots of things there. In the right pyramid facts, you see lots of things. This type okay. of thing. I don't know if it's correct <laughs> or not. All right. Cool. Uh, well, does anybody know how old these are? Um, More than 500 years. Yeah, there you go. So, right here, uh, there was the tallest man-made structure in the world for 3,800 years, right? But they finished it 2,560 BC. So it means, yeah, 4,500 years old. Right. So that's all I can say about that is, wow. That's incredible. That's incredible. Um, okay, and they don't know how they how they did it either, right? They've got ideas on how it was built, but uh, tough to say. To say. And we looked at the Great Sphinx before, and, and Victor told us, I asked, what's something you know? And he said, it used to be more beautiful. <laughs> it, it's true, it is old, so things have fallen apart a little bit, right? And, Huge structure with the head of a human and lion's body. Yeah. It's a national yeah. symbol of Egypt. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I don't know if there, there if there were ever lions in Egypt. I, I I kind of doubt there ever were, but that's interesting. The sand when they excavated it was all the way up to here, though, guys. So they had to actually dig all this sand out and put it somewhere else because. Uh, and you can see there's a tiny person here. So that was a lot of sand. That was a lot of sand. We talked about the riddle of the Sphinx. Does everybody remember what a riddle is? Yeah. Like, take your questions. 
Like a fun activity questions. Right. Yeah, like a uh, a trick question, right? Like a joke question. Kind of a game, a game that people used to play with riddles, right? So, uh, for example, I think I asked, uh, what, what gets, what dries the more it gets wet? No, what gets wet the more it dries? What gets wet the more it dries? And we said, a towel, right? Yeah, a towel. So that's, that's an example of a riddle. Then we talked a lot about the camel. Maybe, maybe too much, but the camel's pretty interesting, right? Camel's pretty interesting. It's got um, a lot of natural defenses against the, the sand and the weather, right? So we said it's got three eyelids, and it can control its body temperature, and it stores the water in its hump, right? Very interesting. And, and it's found all it along. Fat, and it stores I fat it. as well. Oh, yeah. Thank you. And does everybody remember where it's found? Where we where we see the the camel? Uh, Ara North Araki. Ara oh, well, oh yeah, all along northern uh, northern Africa and in into uh, the Middle East as well. All right. Then we talked about the Valley of the Kings here, guys. Does everybody remember what what is important about the Valley of the Kings? Anyone? Anyone? No. Uh, there are uh, some tombs in there. Yeah, actually, the, the majority, the majority of the tombs um, that they found of, of old pharaohs are here. Okay. So, uh, oh, we're running out of time because we we take so long doing our review. I want to make sure we get to look at everything. So basically, I just want to say quickly, um, almost all of the tombs here. Um, are of, of pharaohs and kings. Okay, so they found um, a lot of them, including the famous tomb of Tutankhamun. Does anybody know? Can, actually, I'll get somebody to read this. I'll get somebody to read this. Uh, let's see. I'll start at the beginning here. Um, Huen, can you read that that bottom paragraph for us? Yeah. Um, it's a little blurry. Mm. Let me see if I can make it a little bit bigger for you. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. No. Okay. In modern times, the valley has become famous for the discovery of a tomb of Tutankhamun, with its rumors of the curse of the pharaohs, and is one of the most famous archaeological sites in the world. In 1979, it became a World Heritage Site, along with the rest of the Theban necropolis. Exploration, excavation, excavation, and conservation continues in the valley. Mm. Sorry. And a new tourist center has recently been opened. Good, good. So, exploration, excavation, and conservation. Right. So, to explore. To, to dig things up is excavation, and to conserve things is to keep it in in, um, in, in good good shape. Right? Does anybody know this? What the curse of the pharaohs? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! The curse of the pharaohs is right here. Has, any, has anybody ever heard of that? Uh, it's because of the golden coffin. Yeah. And, and do you know what happened when they found Tutankhamun's tomb? Uh, they said that all people went to the tomb uh, as died. Yeah, all the people who first discovered the tomb died. And, and they said, well, it was the curse of the pharaohs. Do you know what the real cause was? Uh, well, I, I think uh, it's uh, the bacteria or, bacteria or something like that. Exactly, yeah. It was bacteria that was trapped in there because these were such old mummies, right? And and the tomb, um, the gases, I think, from the bacteria ended up killing them. I believe. Something like that, right? But it was very easy to call it a curse, right? A curse. Oh, there you go. Uh, okay, we're going to move on quickly. And oh, sorry, one more thing. Does anybody know who Tutankhamun was? Tutankhamun. 
in common? He's a favorite. Right? Yeah, he he's the most famous. Um, the most famous, I guess, Pharaoh, because he was such. He was a boy when they found him. He was a boy, and they found his tomb intact, right? Which they hadn't found before. So it was the first um, Pharaoh where they found all of the things he was buried with and saw how big he was, and he was just a boy. I think he was like 14 years old or something when he died. And 19, I, I Oh, found. 19, okay. Yeah. Okay, 19, huh? So I think there's a song about him called The Boy King, Tutankhamun. King Tut. King Tut. King Tut. Uh, okay, so speaking of pharaohs, okay, here we have a different pharaoh. Does anybody know which pharaoh this is? I, I don't think this is Tutankhamun. I think this is Ramses, actually. Right. I believe. I believe. They, they look similar. You can't really tell. I just know because <laughs> I found the picture. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, let, let's continue on reading. Liliana, can you read about the pharaoh? Pharaoh is a title used in many modern discussions of the ruler of all ancient Egyptian dynasties. The title originates originates in the term pre. How can I pray? Which means great house, and it describes. I think it means pra, 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 pra because I think uh, like in Spanish, pra, pra, yeah. which means great house, and it describes the royal palace. Historically, however, pharaoh only started being used as a title of the king during the New Kingdom, specifically during the middle of the 18th dynasty. Uh, Pharaoh became a form of address for the person who has, I sorry, who was king of, I know, who was king and son of God Ra. The Egyptian son God Ra considered the father of all pharaohs, who is said to have created himself from a pyramid shaped mound of earth before creating all other gods. Excellent, perfect. So I think we know um, that uh, Egypt was a polytheistic. Um, place, ancient Egypt, so they believed in many gods, but the main god, the main god was the god Ra, the sun, the sun god, okay, and it was believed that pharaohs were actually descendants of, of the god, so in, in ancient Egypt, the pharaoh was actually considered to be almost, almost um, part, uh, almost a god, right, very close to being a god. Uh, okay, sorry guys, we're, we're going a little bit fast today because we need to get through things. Okay? So, does anybody know who this is? Ramses. Is this Ramses? Tutankhamun. I think that one's Tutankhamun. It looks the same though, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Oh, boy. Maybe they're both Tutankhamun, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I found this one and they said it was Tutankhamun, but the other one, but we'll read it anyway because... My, my, na my neighbor has a catch uh, called Ramses. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> there you go, maybe this one's Ramses too. Okay. Uh, Louisa, can you read about Tutankhamun for us? How is his name? Tutankhamun? Tutankhamun. Tutankhamun. Was an Egyptian pharaoh of the 8th dynasty, ruled between 1332 BC until 1323 BC, during the period of Egyptian history known as the New Kingdom. He is popularly uh, referred to as King Tut. The 1922, discovered by Howard Carter and George Herbert of Tutankhamun. Nearly sorry, in fact, Tom received worldwide press coverage. It uh, sparked a new public interest in Asian Egypt, for which Tutankhamun real mask remains the popular symbol. Exhibits of artifacts from his tomb have turned the world. In February 2010, the results of DNA tests confirmed that he was the son of. Uh, Akhenaten and Akhenaten's sister and wife, whose name is unknown but whose remains are publicly identified as the younger lady, mummy found in the world of the king. 
Perfect. And this word right here, Luisa, we actually pronounce tomb. Tomb. Okay, right here. Okay. It, it makes an oo sound. I don't know why. But it's where somebody is buried, right? Like this is his inside his tomb. This is where they put his body in a tomb. Okay. Tomb. Where he's buried. Okay, so yeah, Tutankhamun I think is most famous because he was discovered and he was in one piece. So it says here, renewed public interest. What does that mean, guys? Renewed public interest. It, Any ideas? Renewed public it's interest. It's like uh, the ancient Egypt was being forgotten for yeah. such a long time and when he was discovered people started to have interest exactly. in Egypt again. Exactly. People started to be interested in Egypt again. Thanks. Very good. Yeah. All right, cool. The last thing we have on this page before we quickly look at the history. Mummies. Mummies. Okay. So, speaking about mummies, this is the last thing we're going to look at. Um, there's a lot to read about mummies, though, because they're really interesting. So, uh, Servet, could you read to us about mummies? Yes. A mummy is a body, human or animal, whose skin and organs have been preserved by either intentional or incidental exposure to chemicals, extreme cold, ice mummies, or very low humidity. The English word mummy is derived from the medieval Arabic word mumia, which, me which meant an embalmed corpse and a bituminous embalming substance and also meant bitumen. Bitumen. Okay, good. So wh what this is, what bitumen is, is it's a way to embalm the corpse. Does anybody know what that means, an embalmed corpse? Corpse? Yes, seven. Same as like the mummifies, corpse is the dead body. Yeah, Ball. yeah. And and bomb means kind of to to put things inside the body to make sure that it stays for a long time. Yes, so it's to mummify. Yeah. To preserve the body. To preserve the body and to stuff things in, right? Like like oils and things to make it smell good, right? To take out the organs, it's to embalm it. Uh, bitumen is a, a chemical. Okay, or a, a, a substance used to preserve the body. Okay. Um, you know what, guys? I, I think I'm going to skip this. I'm sorry, but we're running out of time, and I really want to make sure we get to the history. Okay. So I'm really sorry. We're going to skip this. We're going to go straight to the history because we only have 15 minutes. Okay. So here we go. Can everybody see that? Yes. Yes. Okay, cool. History of Egypt. History of Egypt. Okay. Um, Sonia, can you read first the, that first part there? History of Egypt. Okay. Ancient Egypt is established when a king named Narmer unifies the upper and lower kingdoms. Egyptians developed hieroglyphic writing. The pyramids and the Sphinx are built. Good, okay. So that's between this period, 3100 and 332 BC. So this is almost 3000 years, okay? So we're really quickly going through that history. That's kind of what we're talking about. We're at the time of the, the ancient Egyptians, the pyramids, the Sphinx. We talked about hieroglyphics. What are hieroglyphics, guys? It's a type of uh, figures. Using, using images. Images so for what? For, for, for writing. For, for, for writing, exactly. It's a form of writing, right? Hero, hieroglyphs are pictures that are used as writing. Symbols, alphabetical elements. Exactly, exactly. And you see here, guys, whenever we think of Upper and Lower Egypt, we need to remember that Upper Egypt is down here and Lower Egypt is here. Does anybody know why this is Lower Egypt and this is Upper Egypt? Because the oh, so. exactly. The upper course of Upper Egypt. 
Yeah. Because of the what? Because of the Nile River, right? The water moves this way in the Nile River. So this is upriver. This is the upper part of the river. Okay? And this is lower Egypt because this is the lower part. So this king in ancient times, King Narmer, unified upper and lower kingdoms. So he made it a, a one one kingdom. Okay? One king. All right. Then does anybody know what happened around 332 BC? Any ideas? And then it was ruled by Roman. Well, does anybody remember what happened in Turkey around this time? Serbic. Don't ask me. Serbic's like, don't ask me. Serbic said, ask me only about Egypt. Yeah. But about Turkey, I don't know. <laughs> I think the, the, the invasion when, uh, when the. Roman Empire invites Egypt. No. no, there was there was one man who came before the Romans. Uh, oh, uh, Alexander. Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great conquered Egypt in 332, and he began a dynasty that ruled for 300 years. Okay, so his dynasty kind of stayed um, before the Romans. Okay, before the Romans. Now, does anybody know, what is Alexander the Great's legacy in Egypt? What, what do I mean when I say legacy? What is, uh, legacy? is it a library? First library ever? Sure, well, the library is one of them. He left a great library. Where did he leave it? Alexandria. In Alexandria. So this is his other, his other uh, legacy, right? He named a, a large city after him, a famous city, Alexandria. Okay, and it had the world's largest library at the time. I, I think it was destroyed. Um, I don't know if it was during the Crusades or what. I'm not actually sure what what the story is. Somebody destroyed the library. There was a great fire that destroyed it. Uh, what about the uh, lighthouse? The lighthouse of Alexandria. I guess, I don't know if that was built during Alexander the Great's time. I'm not sure. Do you know, Victor? Uh, no, I don't know. Yeah, either. I'm not sure. That's, there's, there's too much history in Egypt. It's difficult to, to find all the dates and everything and found, find out who built what. Right? There's a lot more work we could, we could have done with Egypt, actually. So, yeah, Alexander the Great. So who came after Alexander the Great? The Romans. The Romans, okay. And who was, during the Romans' time there, though, they had somebody in there. They had, um, there was still an Egyptian group in there, okay. And the Romans were like puppet masters, okay. They had a puppet group in Egypt. Do you know who was ruling Egypt during the time of the Romans? Cleopatra. Cleopatra, right. Famous woman. And it's actually her family. Okay? It's actually her family. So I was looking for pictures of Cleopatra, because everybody thinks of her as this very beautiful woman. This is what I found is that I think is the most likely picture of her. What do you guys think? Do you think it, it's difficult to find something that looks like her? I looked at some some sculptures and stuff, but that looked the closest. Um okay. Svetlana, can you read that for us? Okay. Uh, after Romans rom romances with uh, Romans Julius uh, Caesar and Mark Antony, Queen Cleopatra is believed to have killed herself with the bite of a snake. Rome takes control of e Egypt. Okay. So even though, even though um, Cleopatra was not part of the Roman Empire. She was very close to the Romans, right? She had children with Julius Caesar. She had children with Mark Antony. Okay? We're just going to quickly read about Cleopatra because she's quite interesting. She's quite interesting. Victor, can you read that for us? Uh, okay. Cleopatra Philos Philopatus. 
Sorry, sorry. No problem. Okay. Uh, where was I? Cleopatra Philophysa. Uh, 69 BC to 30 BC. Known to history as Cleopatra, was the last pharaoh of ancient Egypt. She was a member of the Ptolemaic. P I think we say Ptolemaic. Ptolemaic. The P is silent. Uh, Ptolemaic dynasty, a family of great origin that ruled Egypt after Alexander the Great's death. The Ptolemaic missed through, throughout their dynasty spoke Greek and refused to speak Egyptian, which is the reason that Greek as well as Egyptian languages were used on official court documents such as the Rosetta Stone. By contrast, the Cleopatra did learn to speak Egyptian and represented herself as the reincarnation of an Egyptian goddess. Isis. Good. Okay. Stop right there. So you see, guys, this is interesting. Cleopatra is actually a descendant of Alexander the Great. Okay. She's part of the same family as Alexander the Great. So the Ptolemaic dynasty were not Egyptians. Okay. They were not Egyptians. And they spoke Greek and did not speak Egyptian. But Cleopatra wanted the respect of the Egyptian people. Okay? So she spoke. She spoke Egyptian. Okay? She spoke Egyptian. Even though people before her had not. Okay? Sorry, can you continue, Victor? Okay. As Pharaoh, she consumes made consummated a liaison. Sorry? Liaison. Liaison with Julius Caesar that solidified her grief on the throne. After Caesar's assassination in 44 BC, she aligned with Mark Antony in opposition to Caesar's legal hire. Gaius Julius Caesar Octavius, Octavianus, later known as Augustus. With Antony, she bore the twin Cleopatra Selene the second, and Alexander Helios, and another son, Ptolemy Philadelphus. Good. Okay. Excellent. So, she is, she's a very interesting person, right? So she had uh, she had a relation with Julius Caesar, and then with Mark Antony, and uh, her story is well told. Well told. Okay. All right, we're going to move very quick here, guys, because we only have five minutes. Okay, So we're just going to quickly go over things, and I'm going to get people to read. So, Jinju, can you read this part right here, including including the dates, if we can? Anubondidar, M-R-I-B-A-L-S, Arabic, Hank yep. Hamter Anakar Dang uh, Anakar during the period during the period many people convert to Islam 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 right the religion of Islam so this Islam. was a time yeah so during this time uh, this this is when Islam um, spread throughout Egypt. Okay, this was the time during which Islam spread throughout Egypt. Okay, and so this is the mosque of Amr ibn Alas in modern day Cairo. Okay, famous mosque in Cairo. All right, so we're going really quick here. All right, fifteen seventeen, fifteen seventeen. Huen, can you read that for us? Yeah. Uh -huh. Fifteen seventeen. Oh, hold on, Jinju. Jinju, Jinju. I'm I'm gonna get Q to read it. Okay. Oh. Okay. Fifteen seventeen. Egypt was conquered by the Ottoman Turks in fifteen seventeen, after which after which it became a province of the Ottoman Empire. 
Good. So we, we talked about this before when we talked about Turkey, obviously, the Ottoman Empire. And we see that by this time it had actually spread into most of Egypt, right? The only part it left was desert. So there you go. So it really spread. Um, okay, Liliana, continuing on. Uh, 869, the Suez Canal opens, linking the Mediterranean with the Red Sea. The canal took 10 years to build and couldn't help the distant ships travel between Europe and parts of Asia. Good, so that was a long time ago, right? 1869, that's, a, that's an old canal now. Right? It's been, been open for almost 150 years. But as Servet said before, 10 years, and it cut in half the distance trips traveled between Europe and Asia. They don't have to go around Africa anymore. Very fast. All right, so now we're moving to the modern, modern Egypt here. Modern Egypt. Right. Uh, 1914. Louisa, can you read that for us? Yes. 1914, Egypt is a declared a protectorate of Britain, giving Britain control over Egypt. Sure. So Britain had a little bit of control over Egypt during this time. Okay. And, and there had already been, um, when the Suez Canal was built, uh, there had already been issues with uh, France as well. And France and Britain were kind of fighting over control of Egypt. But eventually, Britain um, was was declared a, a protectorate, or sorry, Egypt was declared a protectorate of Britain. Okay, but I don't think that made many Egyptians happy. Okay, <laughs> so you see, 1914, Egypt declared a protectorate, and 1922, Servet, can you read that? Yep, Egypt declared independence from Britain. A monarchy is established and fought first is named king. Good. So we see that it was actually only eight years that Egypt was officially a protectorate, a protectorate of Britain. Okay. It wasn't very long. Only eight years. What is protectorate? Protectorate means it's part of the country. It's part of, part of um, England. It, it's, it's almost a nice way to say they were colonized by England. You know, a protectorate means they're part of England, but Separate. Yeah, part of the Commonwealth, basically. I guess similar to how Canada was a, a protectorate of, of England and India was a protectorate of England, Malaysia was a protectorate of England, right? So Australia was, right? So I think it's just kind of saying they were colonized for a little while. A nice way of saying it. 